Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Merry Christmas. If you're watching this after Christmas, it'll be released um, Friday this week, which will be close to Christmas. For this video, I was going to do a cute little Christmas thing a couple of years ago. Some of you who've been following the channel for this long will remember I did a video showing you how to add Christmas decorations to your chart. And um, I'll show you the video here. It's unlisted on my channel, but I'll show you a quick clip from that video. Um, it's from a couple of years back. Two. And here comes the magic. Eight reindeers and a Santa Claus in a sled. And we're going to set the tool tip. So uh, I was going to do a video similar to this this year, but um, I actually had to build a tool to assist in my end of year analysis for my trading. So here in Australia, our financial year starts on the 1st of July. So um, the 1st of January will be the six month mark of our financial year. And so I like to do some analysis on my trading every six months. And so rather than do another video like this, I'll leave a link to this in the video description if you guys want to um, see how to add uh, this <laughs> to your charts. Um, but in today's video, we are going to cover the source code for this tool here that I created, which shows the performance metrics for a market between two periods of time. So here we have the 1st of July or the first date after the 1st of July and the most recent date. I can change this period if I want to. And the script will just display how that market performed during that time period. Um, so this is an easy way for me to compare benchmarks, like um, see what the S&P 500 did during this time compared to my actual trading system. So if I just throw up SPY um, on my chart and change this back to the current date or even beyond, uh, we can see that the SPY is up 7% this year or the, in the past six months. And I can compare my trading results to these benchmarks. So in this week's newsletter, which I would have already sent out by the time you're watching this video, I would have broken down my trading metrics for the year. Uh, these numbers will have been updated slightly, but in this week's newsletter, I'll break down all of my different um, systems and how they performed for the past six months and what I've learned over uh, the past trading year, some reflections on my own trading and the markets in general. I'll be reflecting on that in uh, this week's newsletter, so go and check that out at our website if you're interested at theartoftrading.com. But for today's video, let's get into the source code for this tool here. The source code to the script will be on my website. You can find the link in the video description or the pinned comment below if you want to copy this code into your um, Pine editor. This script only has two user inputs, a start date and an end date. We have some persistent variables for calculating our total return and our um, max favorable excursion and max adverse excursion. That's what MFE MAE stands for. These are just fancy ways of saying how far did the market go in profit and how far did it go in the negative? Um, what were the extremes? So what was the worst drawdown throughout the year and what was the best return throughout the year? Theoretically, obviously the max drawdown is pretty easy to achieve in real trading. You just got to hold on to the asset while it goes through that drawdown. But achieving the max favorable excursion is a different story altogether because that means exiting your position at the highest price possible, which is obviously not going to happen most of the time. I hate to burst any new traders bubbles out there, but uh, there is no system that will get you out at the top consistently. But it is interesting to gauge that metric. It is interesting to compare your performance to what was possible. What, what, how much did you leave on the table? That's an interesting metric to analyze in your trading. Um, you shouldn't compare yourself to it, but you can at least compare your system's performance to um, see how much it's leaving on the table. Because if you're constantly or consistently leaving a large amount of profit on the table, maybe there is a way to adapt your system to capture more of that upper end of profitability. Uh, but anyway, very simple script. I'll just quickly explain what it's drawing here. So this first white line is the start date. This second white line is the end date. It's hard to see, but there are two black lines here. They just represent the highest and lowest price that um, the market achieved throughout the year. The red line is the end price, the closing price. This is all based on closing prices, by the way. There's no point analyzing the highs and lows of price action when it would be a complete fluke to exit a position either at the lowest wick or the highest wick. Um, I operate on candle closes, whether it's a five minute chart strategy or a daily chart strategy or even a weekly chart strategy. I base my decisions on candle closes. So that's what this um, data down here is calculated on. And finally, the blue line here is price action as a line. It's just plotting the closing price um, throughout the time period we're analyzing. 
So the source code is pretty simple. Uh, we just have these two inputs for telling PyScript which period of time to analyze. We have all the relevant variables we need in order to analyze. The first thing we need to do is um, detect first bar that prints on or after start date. So if the current bar's time is greater than or equal to our start date input, which, um, which is a timestamp, I covered timestamps and time inputs in the previous week's newsletter. So if you're new to PineScript or you're not very comfortable or familiar with time um, coding in Pine, go and check that newsletter out. Again, it's on our website, theartoftrading.com. If the current bar is printed after that start date, then this if statement gets um, executed. If start price is NA, that means this is the very first bar that has printed after our start date. And we want to save the opening price of that bar where price originates during our time period. We need to save the start index or so the bar index of that first bar purely so we can draw these lines. So you can see that our line starts here. All of these lines are drawn on the final bar on our chart. So in order to draw a line from this bar, we need to save that into our code. We need to tell our code that we want to start drawing this line from this bar index, which is the 1st of July or the nearest bar to it. In this particular case, that was the 3rd of July. Uh, my user input here is set to the 3rd, probably because I added it first onto a Forex market where trading does not occur on Saturdays. But there we go. On crypto, obviously this trades over the weekend, so we can start our period from the 1st of July. And so with this code, if price exceeds our end date, or we reach the final confirmed history bar, so the very last bar printing onto our chart, if either of those conditions are met, then this script analyzes that time period. So I could drag this period back to, let's say the 1st of December, and now it's analyzing that time period. But if I change this to say 2025, then it's only going to analyze up until the final confirmed hist historic bar on my chart, historical bar. So this real time bar here is ignored. It's only basing its analysis off confirmed price information. And I noticed there that on the 1st of December, um, that bar happened to be the highest close of the year and it drew a black line over the top of our red line. So what I need to do before we move on is just swap these two around because PineScript draws in order that you tell it to. And so it was drawing this black line over the top of our high, our end price. So now if I save my code, we'll get the end price drawing over the top and that looks better. If this is the very first bar that printed within our time period, then our start price will be NA. And so we can assign start price to the open, save the index and draw this white line. The way we draw a vertical white line is by giving this line object the same index for its two X values. So X1 and X2 should be the current bar index. And then Y1 and Y2 should be the open and the close. And then you can extend both and that will um, extend the line indefinitely in both directions and that gives us the vertical line you can obviously do the same for horizontal lines i decided not to do that with the script um, and then this block of code here this else statement is only executed if start price is not na so if we've already assigned a start price that means we are printing price action after our start date but it's not the very first bar since this code's been ex executed. So that means this code gets executed and this code here just checks, is our lowest price NA or is the current bar's closing price lower than the currently saved lowest price? So as price moves lower, we keep saving that price. And then as soon as it starts moving up, we stop saving that price and this ends up being saved um, as our lowest price, this black line. And same for the highest price but obviously the opposite direction and that's it that's all the information we need to calculate these three metrics um, next we have a custom function here for converting the difference of two values into percentage and then we can detect final final bar on our chart slash time window so this two percent function takes two numbers and converts it into a percentage that's how we get these values here um, and this block of code is where all of our analysis is done. So if the current bar is the last confirmed historical bar or the current bar's time 
exceeds our end date. And our end price is NA or not set to anything. Then this code gets executed. First, we save end price. That stops this code from executing again and draws the label and all of our lines and, and what have you. So we draw our price lines um, from the start index. Remember, we had to save our start index when we saved our start price so that we knew where to draw our lines from. So we draw from our start index to the current bars index plus 10. So we have a 10 bar offset. If I zoom in here and measure out from here to at the end of our line. Um, oh, and we have some plots down here that we don't actually need. So let me get rid of these plots. That's drawing the same thing twice. So now our lines are drawing 10 bars into the future to give us a bit of an offset. If you want to, you can get rid of that. I'm not really sure why I left that in. Let's get rid of that. And now we can see that we're definitely, it's a bit easier to see what window of time we're analyzing. There we go. That looks a bit better. So all these numbers now are analyzed based on everything that happens between these two lines. And this is where we prepare that information to be drawn as a string. So we add the symbol info, we calculate the total return as a percentage, the highest return and the lowest return. We add all of these by building a string. We build or concatenate a bunch of text. Um, That's a fancy word for adding a bunch of text together to get this. And you can use the backslash N to add a new line. Just makes it easier to read. We draw the label 10 bars off from the current bars. And I'll remove this 10 bar offset from the label as well. And zoom out. Let's add a one bar off offset. I think that'll look a bit better. Yeah, there we go. And that's it. We draw our label with all our text. And then we also plot the closing price. It only plots if start price and end price are NA. But on the final bar, end price will not be NA. That's why if I zoom in here, the blue line should really draw up to this red line since that's the final closing price. So let's add a one historical operator on here. So this will draw the closing price so long as our starting price has been set. So we are plotting price action beyond our start price. And if our end price, this price here, this variable, is NA on the previous bar, um, now our line will draw up to the red line. So now we're getting our closing price all the way to the final bar on our chart. And that's it, that's the script. It's a pretty simple tool here, but I thought it was an interesting um, application of time inputs. Um, you can obviously adapt this for anything. You could turn this into a backtesting filter so that your script only filters trades between a certain period of time. You can analyze other metrics in here. You could analyze indicator values between this period of time. Um, you could adapt this to analyze trading sessions instead of dates. So intraday, you could analyze price action on an intraday basis and see what the opening range is like on certain markets in the morning hours, for example, or pre-market, anything like that. So I'll leave this video here. I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas and New Year. I probably won't release a video until 2024, which is crazy to think about. Thank you everyone for your support this year. You guys are amazing. Uh, I've had a fantastic year. I had a lot of fun both trading and teaching PineScript. Next year, I'll be expanding the channel to cover more topics, more subjects. We'll go into real test. We'll go into stock trading systems. A lot more information on systematic trading um, development backtesting, um, automation, all of that fun stuff. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next year. I hope you have a fantastic holiday. Have fun with your family and hit the ground running next year. I'll be right there with you.